we're back. Thank you guys for tuning in to the newest episode of the Minority Power with the greatest looking co-host, beautiful looking co-host, Mustafa Wheelie, greatest lawyer of all time, Mustafa Wheelie. Hola. The other host, myself, Khalil Bazi, and we have two special guests today. Uh, they're not famous for anything, but they're really good people. And uh, One of them's our engineer. One of them's our engineer. <laughs> this is the guy behind the camera. This is the guy Kass. behind the camera. What's up, guys? Hello, guys. It's nice to actually sit here in front of you guys and yes. not have to work all the time. Yes, yes. yes. And then uh, this is the, and this is our other guest. Uh, I dropped his name a hundred times. His name is Khalid Harani. Uh, he's during he was on with us during the live, but this is finally him sitting down. Welcome. What's up? What's Thank up, you. everyone? What up, boys? Okay, guys. What's going on? This is our first time running a four in this format with two cameras. Two cameras. We got Hopefully two cameras. Hopefully, you guys enjoy a quick breakdown, quick house cleaning, real quick. Uh, we're just getting back in the mojo. We're trying to record every week. Uh, we're going to try tackling everything we possibly can. We're going to bring on guests, like the more known guests. Right, right. But we're going to do it once in a while. We're not going to do it every time. We're just going to have normal conversations like this. If you want any merch, go on our uh, Instagram. Link in the bio. Uh, that will take us to your merch if you want to support. And uh, we do have sponsors. We're uh, slowly getting back into that. So if you want to do a sponsor, an episode, where it will appear in the beginning and the end. Uh, we'll read a script. Uh, go ahead and message us uh, for the details and price. Anything else? Yeah, I was going to say, I know we're not doing sponsors this week, but uh, I promised Yusuf Bazzi I'd be wearing his hoodie on this uh, on this episode. Shout out to Yusuf Bazzi and the brothers. I know there's three of them. Conceal the world. Get yours today. Great hoodies. They fit awesome and uh, definitely a great message. What's the message? You know what? I feel like the way they did it is more of like you can like self-define it, but there is an overall message that like uh, people are kind of being scared to be themselves and this kind of like shields you from that when i i watched the video what i got yeah. out of it was uh don't get don't get lost in the world that's Just what i'm trying yourself. to say yeah yeah, yeah yeah because other people are trying to change things well All people right. are trying to change things you kind of should be like be yourself you know what i mean shout out go ahead and uh, go on their website we'll tag them we'll clip this out send it to them and then uh, beautiful hoodies i asked for them but supposedly they're sold out yeah they're sold out so get to you well, guys soon they're very hey, good people uh, good family your elbows on your mic wire be careful oh, you're, you're good. all right guys Let's get into it. Let's get into this conversation. First off, I want to shout out to Gunny's Garage. Shout uh, out to Gunny's Garage for <laughs> he, sure. He was one of our guests. He is one of their members. Uh, he reached out to him to reach out to me. He went and uh, had us on uh, in one of his uh, sessions, and he killed me. Yeah. Uh, put yeah, my, hand, you, put my hands to I He puked. His, don't yeah, don't right, forget right, that. Right, he chill puked. Out, chill out. All right. He put me to work. <laughs> I was running. Listen, I'm trying to get into shape, and I was, I, I was, I was done. Yeah. He he put my ass to work. Uh I was so funny. So I was working out, I was doing everything. Yeah. And instantly I knew I was gonna throw up. Instantly. I looked at him, I'm like, I'm about to throw up. And he started laughing. I'm like, okay, I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing it. I looked at him like I'll be right back. I I, I gotta go to the bathroom. I threw up like 10, 30, like probably a minute later, I come out of the bathroom, I take out my shirt, like I had a hoodie on. I took out my shirt, get back, I got right back into it. He kicked my ass. It's a great time. Um he makes the environment very uh friendly and good to work out with. You go there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so go there. I go there often. Shout out to Gunny. Support the community. And uh, he does a great job. If you're anything, looking for anything in your fitness goals, that guy's the guy to go to. All right, guys. Let's get back in. Let's get into it. So what do you guys want to kick off with? Well, let's kick off with our guest here, bro. You know, it's funny. So we originally said that Ali Cast coming on would be fun. Like me, you, the engineer. And then Ali Cast mentioned to bring on Kel Harani, too. Yeah. I figured Kel would be a good addition because, uh, you know, I don't... It's my first time, obviously, sitting with you guys alone, but me and Kale, we hang out every day. I figured it would be yeah. a good mix of conversations to have. So, so. this is uh, this is the infamous Kale Harani. This is the one that we're always talking about Yeah. when, when it comes to various subjects. So now, yeah. before 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 we went live, uh, you said that Kale might have uh, misquoted you yes, on the topic can. we had last he week. Did. Maybe maybe he we did. can start with that. I didn't misquote him. All right. No, he, he put out my point, and he defended it terribly. He, he portrayed it uh, terribly. All right, so go ahead. so All right, this right, is what my ahead. point was from last week. So on the topic of freedom fighter, and it's not only freedom fighter, it's other people in the community that, that necessarily don't necessarily have a good message, right? Neg negative stuff. I'm not saying freedom fighter. I don't watch the stuff, well, so I wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah. <coughs> but Dearborn, in my opinion, has blood on their hands. This guy is in jail because of, because of Dearborn. Because every time somebody posts something that's, that's negative, it gets shared. It's a WhatsApp group chat, this, that. And there's obviously a few people in our, in our community that are notorious. They just, they just, they just blast people. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, about yeah, four yeah. or five of them. Yeah, yeah. And and what is what do we do? Like obviously we share it, and and those guys they feed off of it. You know, that's what they want. It's exactly what they want. Grown and, ass and they, men. And grown ass men. So you're saying we obviously, support it? 
you support it, and obviously they have a mental condition, you know, and and you know, can you really blame them? But you're feeding into it, and it's uh, and like when you go back to Freedom Fighter, does he does he keep doing what he's doing and gets pushed further and further? Yeah, I I, I don't watch his stuff. I don't know. Honestly, I just know only thing I know about him. I found out about him. I found out about him when he got charged. Truthfully, I don't get involved with that. But uh, but yeah, he got pushed, pushed, and now he did something crazy. Now he's uh, looking at, at time in jail, right, and a million dollar bond or something like that. So let me ask you a question. Ask why 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 do you say Dearborn has blood on his hands? Because because it hadn't okay when you share negative stuff, right? I mean, we I feel like. I mean, it's it's in our nature. Your people like like bad news, right? And they like to share bad news. I mean, if you're proactive about it, right? And you're like, you know what? This is something that's not good. This is something that's like that's that brings good to nothing. Then don't give it to any attention, right? Right. This goes to the national level too. It's like a big topic. Like okay, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, like uh, every time there's a mass shooter, right? Their face is always there. And guess what? That's exactly what they want. You always get to see the mass shooter, mm-hmm. and that pushes another mass shooter because he wants his he wants the nor- notoriety. He wants to be on on national TV. He wants his face there. I think they only blast it when they want the narrative to blast it. No. Yeah. When did the, they, the when Michigan did they State? Okay, let's talk. I don't care. I'm talking about this. Michigan State. Okay. Yeah. Should have been a national topic for weeks. The okay. Oxford got blasted for social media for a month. It got put on everywhere. Jimmy Kimmel, all these guys are talking about it, right? Yeah. Michigan State, under, what is it? Uh, it was a shit show for, what, three, four, five hours? Mm, that's yeah. true. Three people died. Yeah. It was oh. a 43-year-old black man. I, was, right. I swear to God, I went to sleep, and I was like, man, this is going to be a shit show tomorrow, right? Yeah. I woke up. That's true. That Not is true. Not one ma- national media outlet posted it. I'm like, what the hell? Like what's going on? It's either they don't want that that person and that narrative to go around as a black shooter, or these guys are like they're either they're 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 completely like um, desensitized by by um, by shoot uh, school shootings. Yeah. But I was expecting so much more of more coverage. I literally like Barstool. Everyone was posting Oxford, and you know what I mean. Oxford was a big when, one, right? When was Oxford? I don't last know. year. That was uh, last year. I think that was a that was the guy out of Oakland County. Uh, the uh, what the hell was his name? That the kid, remember that kid, the fo- right here, Oakland no, County. Okay, yeah, Oxford was like an hour away. Remember when yeah. they, they had the kid that a the, school shooting, the football school player, shooting, right? Remember the football player that that saved the kid's life? He got yeah, shot. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that I mean that was na- that wasn't that was not stopped talked about yeah. for like a, for like legit um, like yeah. a month. Right. I woke up the next day and nothing. Right. I'm like, is it because the person that did the school shooting they don't want to blast him or they just desensitized or wh- what's the like, how how did yeah. that just how did that completely just wave over the media? Yeah. Right, yeah, and I think that, that you did see it. You were kind of were surprised. Oh my God, it's not a middle-aged white guy. Exactly, and yeah. know what the media would want to do because it's easy to bl- it's easy to blast the white person because we're in America. Yeah, yeah. it's easy. There's nothing to get back. Like, oh, it's just another white guy. But if it's a black person or Arab or any of this stuff, it's 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 whatever okay. like that, right? It's yeah. like you can bet if anything. It's it's the way it is. And if you if if it's something like you can put a pedestal of someone, it's gonna be a white person. They they want to blast it. Percent that everything is wrong, but the way the media picks and chooses what they want to blow up and talk about for weeks compared yeah. to something else, it's bu- it's, it's horseshit. Well, it's let me let me ask you guys a question. Why 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 do you think that they didn't talk about Michigan State? It's either it's either America is desensitized yeah. by school shootings, which is crazy because we lead the world. No, I don't think they shootings. are desensitized because I mean. Then explain what happened. Because the Oxford, no, I, I just don't think it's for that reason. I don't, because I don't know why. I'm asking what you it's think. It's either okay. that or they just didn't want. They didn't want to put that guy and that image up on the TV. Yeah, but why that him. guy? So I so know. so th- I think desensitization I, has a, a lot to play with it. Because did you guys hear about like the news reporter that got shot? There was like some guy that like shot. I think it was like his. His mom or something, and then went out and shot and two more people, and shot out. And then later, shot two more people after that. This is recent. This is this week, no. right? Any media coverage? Is it, like I'm, I'm telling unheard you. of. Yeah, I think it's literally whatever. Like I swear to God, they're like oh, the media looks at oh, this would be a good story. Let's blast this for two weeks instead of like instead yeah. of like whatever. Because if it was, bro, I'm telling you, no, I if it you know was a I white guy, is. they would have. I don't think even if it was white, I don't think, think so? it would have mattered. Um, I, I think it's I think it's two things. I think number one, honestly, I think it's not enough death. That's <laughs> fucked crazy, up, but yeah. it's the truth. I swear to God. And number yeah. two, I think the age group people don't care about that age group. Oxford had less. 
Oxford yeah, but too, Oxford, look at the age group in Oxford. You want to talk true. about a white guy, the Kalamazoo shooter. I know. Okay, did you guys ever hear about the Kalamazoo shooter? This is pretty no. sick. None yeah. of you guys know about it, right? I do because I went to Western Michigan. Okay, I think it was like 2016 or 2017. There was a guy that had an Uber. He was picking up people in downtown Kalamazoo. He was shooting them, throwing them in the woods, and picking up somebody else and doing the same thing. Jeez, what did this come out? I, this was four years ago, four or five years ago. It can't. Well, no one talked about it. It can't be age though. And this, I think it's an age. I think it's an age thing. The girl, the the, the, the three people, they were in the, they were in age group of 19 to 20. The kid that died was 16, 17. What are you talking about? The Oxford was like 17, 18. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying because I thought okay. the age of the shooter. No, man. I'm talking about like in terms of like the grade level. So no, it's not that big of a difference. It's it's not, but I think. They take it more seriously if it's like a grade school versus a college. School shootings, right. school in terms of in terms of yeah. in terms of media, school shootings are school shooting. Yeah, yeah mine are, I think when it's in a school like a, a grade school, I think it is worse because you know parents are sending their kids to school. Sandy Hook was obviously the worst. Well, that's because that was like really the inciting one with with like a grade school. And then you keep going on. No, right now there's an I think the U.S. leads uh, school shootings like 143 a year. Or some stupid shit like that. Mm-hmm. Jeez. And we put, we put, that's something we lead the nation in. Yeah, no, no, lead we do. World, we do yeah. lead the nation in mass shootings. All I'm saying is, I woke up the next day. Probably not even close. Supr- oh, we destroy oh, everyone. Not We're close. not even close. I woke up the next day. I was like, how isn't this blasted over social media? So I, I saw something on uh, someone on my, one of my followers or on Instagram posted it. And so Governor Whitmer is trying to get like more cops into schools. And like the liberals are against it. Are against no, 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 police no. and schooling? Why? Police and schooling. They so said th- they, this is their argument is that kids don't feel safe with uh, with a cop in school. And I'm just, my thinking is feel safe. It doesn't matter whether, whether you feel or you don't feel safer. You You're are safer. safer. <laughs> you are safer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's another thing. Like, why the fuck does it matter what the kids think? With all due respect, they're kids. Yeah. Th- like, they, they don't know what's best bro, for them. They we're quoting 10th graders on yeah. it. Yeah. So I don't understand that point, but maybe, I don't know, maybe someone could well, like... Well, attack the lives on a whole new episode. Listen. <laughs> we need one on here. Huh? We need to live on They here. have so much courage behind the keyboard, <laughs> but, the, but, <laughs> but so much courage, like, oh, rah, 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 but they want to come down and sit with and talk, and they don't, they don't like it. And every time they get put, put on a social media platform against the conservative, they get blasted. Like, yeah, and right. is it, whatever. The po- all right. So, yeah, the only thing I was, I was talking about, it's, it's very surprising... I didn't get no coverage. And you guys would all agree. It didn't get coverage. Yeah, you know, it didn't yeah. get coverage. You're right. At all. It didn't. Maybe yeah. the night of, but that was it. Bro, Freedom Fighter got more coverage than that thing. <laughs> yeah, right? The, 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 the broccoli brawl at Good, Good, Good Burger got more coverage <laughs> than that. Yeah, hey, that's something else I've been noticing, by the way. The broccoli brawl? No, not the broccoli <laughs> brawl. I've been talking about, like, <laughs> did you, like... <laughs> <laughs> the broccoli bro. Why hey, they hey, call it the broccoli bro? They all had the same haircut, broccoli haircuts. Oh. Hey, listen. Oh, someone, they, uh, said, someone said when the police lined them up, they couldn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the comments. <laughs> hey, just imagine this. Imagine 100 kids. <laughs> imagine you going into Good Burger, right? You're trying okay. to place an order and you look behind you. <laughs> and it's a bunch of kids in, in, in gym shark gear. All right. Pull the real oh, Slim bro- Shady. Please stand up. Broccoli haircuts. All right. With chains. And like, like They're all wearing Canada, like what? Fear of God hoodies? Fear of God hoodie, fear of God hoodies. <laughs> and Yeezys and can- for sure. Like Yeezys, Canada gooses that they can't afford. And they sit there and they're all pushing each other. No no, no punches were thrown. And they're all broccoli haircuts. And they're all pushing like a wave at a pool, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. imagine you look back and there's like a hundred of them behind you. Mm. What would you have done? <laughs> I don't know. Bro, fit, I would have <laughs> started recording. I would have left my ass. I would have probably FaceTimed you. Bro, and then you got like 16, like, like all, all teenage girls. Oh my God, I'm Moody. Someone grab him. I'm Moody. <laughs> Someone's like, is that? Bro, I was dying. And I'm sitting back and I'm like, what are we doing here? What's Dear One become, bro? bro There's two place. outfits in there. No, there's two <laughs> outfits. Did you, did you guys hear about the kid that was jumped at Crestwood? Okay, yeah. yeah like, so they beat the shit out of this kid. Okay, so there's two stories. Uh, the first is the broccoli brawl. That, bro, like, what do, we'll get to that next. I think those are two different stories. Two though, different stories not, happened yeah. the same week, I think. So yeah. the broccoli brawl is like, cuz, like, what are we doing? There was legit, first of all, why was there a hundred kids inside of Good Burger? <laughs> and oh, I, I was, I was <laughs> surprised. Kids, I, I, I was surprised. None of the workers, none of the owners. Like, if I was owning that facility, I was in the middle of it. I'm trying to get well, everybody out I, of the I building. Probably after the twentieth kid called in, I, just, I walked I in. I probably would have walked in. I would have yeah. so yeah. many Yeezys in one place. There's nobody there. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> fucking sunny it probably reeked, store, it probably reeked of uh, Savage Dior. <laughs> you know what I think about now? You know what this reminds me of? Fucking X. X body spray. Hey, this reminds you. Hey, about? get the X. Hey, all those nematodes that <laughs> went into the crusty crab. Meep, meep, meep. 
it, it, one of the jokes. That, every single comment, why, is, why do they have the same haircut? Oh, Tragic. Like, um, okay, so the Crestwood thing, from what I've heard, I could be completely wrong. Yeah. So from what I've heard was um, some kid, the kid that got put in a coma, was because he drove a nice car or something like that. So they the jumped him for being no, wealthy? They were picking on him, and then the oh. kid went back, and they just beat the shit out of him. What was the other story you heard? That's the only story I heard. What Honestly, you man, ev- there's stories everywhere, but from what I heard, it was... Um, so obviously, you have the group of uh, kids that come from overseas, and they make their own pact in school. And so from what I heard, that these guys were obviously going at it with a different group of kids in school. Okay. Um, and you know how we are. When we see somebody come new from Lebanon, they don't speak much English. Uh, they, they just speak Arabic. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The kid, they jumped with a boater? From what I heard, that they were, yeah, he got. If, what? If, if I would have put money on it, I would have said the boaters did that to the guy. That's the yeah, that's what I would have thought. Ruthless. So we don't know what it was, but anyway, it was, <laughs> the it was, boaters it was that group. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was guys. supposed to be that group. <laughs> I have a very bad habit of using that word. I use me too. No, no, no. So, yeah, that that was from what I heard. It was two (laughs) different packs, and uh, they just, uh, they were supposed to fight, and that kid ended up, I guess, getting uh, jumped. There was some situation that happened in school, but his boys or his friends ended up walking away. Okay, but here's here's, here's, here's where I'm (laughs) confused. Yeah, here was a. (laughs) Stop. Is he, is he okay? Now? Yeah, he was okay. He was was fine, but I think there was charges pressed. (laughs) Okay, good. That's, That's fucked. What are these guys <laughs> laughing at? Like, <laughs> hey, well, uh, I'm thinking this is serious. The kid no, it is pretty serious. We're talking about something serious. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> Bro, have you ever seen that in school? What? Where so they so the, and then you <laughs> they smack you in the back uh, of the neck. Okay, okay. You know I what know. I'm talking about. Now you're all laughing. Okay, okay, okay. No, but here's what I'm trying to say. Here's what's crazy. Number one, it's 2023. Where the fuck is the administration? Yeah, well, this was, but this this is, happened inside this of this existed it when we were in school, man. I, I know, I know. I'm not saying no, but yeah, even but like at our time, C- no one got put in a fucking coma. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, bro, I imagine beating the shit out of somebody for so long and so hard that he went into a coma. Absolutely. Yeah. Where are the teachers? Where's security? What the fuck is going on there? I'd come at their parents. But then again, I think you the, can you can sue the fuck out of their parents, bro. Like, what are you raising for you to pr- put that much harm there on was, the kid for there going was, to coma? There was charges pressed. Oh, there is, there is, there is charges. Yeah, hundred percent. They were, yeah. If you're a lawyer, how you attacking that? What do you mean? If I'm a civil, like if I'm doing a civil or criminal, bro, but if I'm a prosecutor, I am filing the, the most heinous charges I can against these kids. You're talking, I'm going felonious assault. Bro, if they put him in a coma, you're talking great bodily harm. There's, I mean, if there was something that was used other than their fist, you can, you can, there's a lot of things you can charge here. It could have went e- really wrong. You know what the best part, not the best part, but like unfortunate part was the f- recording. It was all on camera. Mm-hmm. So you literally right. go to court, you show the camera. It's over. But you know, there's also cameras in school. And, yeah, but and everybody's not, asking, like, why Why are these kids all here recording? They're not as clear as the yeah, fr- iPhone right. five feet away. And they got everything on. Bro, this kid was on the floor, and they're kicking him in the face. I'm like, bro, how do you, how do you, like, how does someone get raised in the mindset of, let me knock this kid with my shoe until he's unconscious yeah, and I keep don't know, going? Man. I can't bro. believe that. And like, I just, I just so wonder. Hot on, man. Let me, so I, I never, thank God, I'm actually happy I didn't watch it. I never watched the video. I, I never, I know I never saw full, it. Yeah, I never saw the full But what I'm saying is this, so. I never knew until, by the way, it's the first time I'm hearing about this that he went to a coma. No, yeah, I just saw it on oh, Did he wake school. up? Yeah, he went to the hospital. He The next day he was fine. Man, it all, c- it all circles back to uh, people's uh, sharing stuff that's, uh, that's negative. I swear to God, because like, let's say it was your son. Do you, do you want that video? No, absolutely not. But, 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 but like, but I don't think that's what caused the actual incident. It do- yeah, you're right. It didn't cause it. Bro, but it's, it's just not it's right what we do. Obviously, these kids are going to be kids. Yeah, we, were, know, we were in that... We were in the same the boat. Like you know, you know, you know what, Kel, as, as, as a response to you, I, I don't think it's more of a, uh, of, 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 of people like to share negativity. While that's true, I don't think it's more that people like to share negativity. It's more of like awareness. Too? I think, no, I think human beings naturally are attracted to violence. Yeah, and sure. then you have well, all the mortal technique. Everybody hype you, you, you up. I'm sure you guys have heard of mortal technique, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a civil rights activist. He's also a rapper. Yeah. So he was talking about something. He was like, and somebody was asking him the same question as it related to like uh, 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 the topic of guns and like shootings. Yeah. And so they were like, uh, you know, why do you think, you know, these things are happening, blah, blah, blah. And he had a similar answer to yours. He's like, well, we're becoming desensitized to this. So because of the desensitization, it's, it's become more normal. And she was like, how so? He was like, well, let me break it down for you. He said, if you, if you, if you or anybody you know was on YouTube, and he, he said it brilliantly. He was like, if you or anybody you know was on YouTube, and you're going, you know, you're looking, you're just scrolling through videos. And there's one video that says five kids building a computer together. 
no one is going to click on that link. Uh, it's it's like, but thing. then you see a link under it that says five kids throwing a bunch of computers at one another. Every single person <laughs> is clicking that link. That's yeah, negative. Which is, which is, it's the truth. Yeah. But that, but I mean, but then that becomes, is it more of like people, uh, you know, you're, yeah. you're now attacking the true nature of man. Sometimes you got to go against your, your innate, like, feeling wh- like what Yeah, you're like, you're, you're like natural cravings. Yeah, natural cravings. I get you what you're You got to go against that. I get that. I get yeah. that. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, we're <coughs> victims. We're victims to it. Yeah, almost one hundred percent. It's listen. We can sit here and talk. Like, obviously, negative spreads. It's, it's negative. It's common. Like, every single group chat in Dearborn. I think me and Hawili were in, uh, we're in like a top five top. And my uh, me for me, I don't send. I receive a lot. I don't send. I think. I think, bro, you can literally you're test this as theory. Much as a, you're just as culpable. Is receiving it and giving it? Absolutely lot. not. Oh, yeah, I don't give. I don't send. Are you, are you responding LMAO, whatever, hard, you know, laughing to it? It depends how messed up it is. You're, <laughs> you're just as culpable, Listen, with, bro. With what we're talking about before, but before the episode started, how during Ramadan, certain videos were getting sent. I never, la- I literally deleted it. I didn't send not one thing. I don't send regardless. If it's ba- if it's destroying someone's image, I will not send. Even if I tell the guys, I'll call it. Because like, I'm admins in some group chats. Every time certain things get sent, I delete them. Like that picture you sent. I delete which what? picture, um, the tr- the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, I don't so, um, oh, the one you originally sent me, that one. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, to you okay. though. As we're talking oh, about yeah, something. Oh, yeah, you're but right. Listen, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not in the group chat. Listen, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So that makes it less filthy, Kel. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, <laughs> um, when it's destroying someone, it, it, receiving, bro, you're gonna be in group chats receiving it. It's just sending it. How much damage you can do by sending it to another group chat? To send it to another group chat, you can literally make a, a picture of you, and literally put Dearborn man. Um, does something right, and you send it to one group chat, it'll be all around Dearborn within ten minutes. Hundred percent, right, yeah. So, Bro, like, I I'm got a sticker that was made of me yesterday. I'm uh, sure there's right. more than just. Oh, like, no, yeah. there was a specific <laughs> sticker that these assholes made of me. All right, and voila, within probably ten minutes, I had five different group chats tagging me That's, with that yeah. sticker. I saw that sticker. Tragic. Just like HFJ. You can't stop it. Oh, yeah. HFJ. Send him some stickers of himself. This guy's like, where did this come from? Well, here's the thing. He knows, though. Are you serious? Yeah, knows, you don't know that? Yeah. That, I mean, that's that's different because he's 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 a household name. He's out there. So, yeah. So, it's but a lot easier f- to happen in that situation. <laughs> the funniest one where it's like, uh, say it. It's the guy interviewing, say it. And he's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> say it. <laughs> yeah, wow. wow. Does you see all the um, gun to his head? It's the same sticker. No, I never seen it. There's instead of a mic, there's a gun to his head. It's say it. He's like, Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but what do you expect, like though? Walla, what do you expect? Yeah. I think he's so misunderstood. Who? H of no, he's a great guy. Like I love him so too. many people misunderstand the guy. No, no I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's misunderstanding. I think people are just assholes. People are bullies. Yeah. That's really all it is. Yeah, but every time I talk to any of those bullies, they say, oh, he's a nice guy. We're just messing with yeah. him and stuff like that. And he, he has thick enough skin. And listen, you don't... You don't go into the spotlight with with uh, with with soft skin. You need, to have, like, you need to have like some you, type of like. You know, I just met the guy two years ago, not even really? a year ago. Oh, yeah, we went to while. Colorado together, and we became and boys like all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, he's uh, HFJ is one of the nicest he's, guys yeah. ever. He's, he's sure. a, yeah. What's the word? If I eat, like he's, he's a good heart. Yeah, he's a hanun. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He is. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy, and obviously he's uh, he's very. Cur- like, every time you put any type of personality that's somewhat a little different out in Dearborn. You're getting clapped. Yeah, you remember you're getting yeah, 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 they're getting flipped. We were, we were going hiking, me and him, Thurg, all the guys are getting ready to go hiking. This guy's just sitting on his phone in, in his room. We're like, you want to come with us? He goes, no, I want to go back to Dearborn. I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, we packed up our bags at three time. in the morning. Yeah, yeah he didn't Straight know us as well. But yeah. now he loves to travel. Yeah, he's yeah. he's getting out of there, yeah, a lot more. Yeah. For sure. Listen, bro, HFJ is a good vibe, bro. I love That's him, all that matters. Yeah. He's a good yeah. vibes. He's, he's a good energy. Uh, I should he's buy a fifth mic just to have him. On oh, I, lo- I love that guy. He's he's good energy. He's like uh, he's always willing to hang out and meet new people. He, yep. he put your pot on the map. He did. He was the first person. I appreciate. Yeah, and him he was. He was. Nice he, that's what I like about him. He's very supporting, man. And I give him mm-hmm. props because it's does. not it's not easy to be on camera. It's it's really not. Yeah. You got to get used to it. Yeah, he, sure. he he's a good guy. Shout out to HFJ. We love yeah. you and uh, Charlie. You're doing well. Okay, uh, any other topics you want to kick into before I pick the next topic? Well, we're on the topic of travel. We we're actually just talking about um, mm. whether, because Kale was telling me about some interview coming up out of state, and I was asking him uh. whether he'd be okay or his thoughts on moving, because I never saw this guy as one who would want to leave. Yeah, I, no. I, f- I feel like he would be the one to leave. Could I go into really? detail I never, what it is? Knowing him, I, w- I didn't I don't think mind. that. All right, Kale Harani is an electrical engineer at uh, some company, and he got an interview, he got an email from Tesla, 
By the way, yeah. this guy's the number one Tesla hater. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I, oh no, man. Jeez, I'm going to lose this Because Tesla ain't going to watch this podcast. Well, but well. Um, uh, So I'm a huge Tesla guy, and Kel Harani is a Tesla hater. But he messaged me, and I messaged me. He talk all the time, and he's like, I got an interview. And I'm like, right? Yeah, it's, like, it's early. It's not, you know, nothing nothing yet. But, like, you, like the topic. It, makes, it makes you think, like, I never thought I'd leave the leave the state. But when I thought about it, Kelly is probably the only state I would leave to. Yeah, but that's not true. You, you, I would pick Florida over Kelly. What? Florida over okay, Kelly? Okay, let me, let me tell crazy. you why. Let me tell you why. Okay, yeah, Florida year-round so. is much better in weather. Bro, we went to Arizona in December. It was 40 degrees in Cali, first of all. It's much better than anything, okay? Second of all... I feel like I feel like Cali, Cali, you could just probably go out and walk around and, like, people are lively, you know, okay. stuff like that. And you're not going to get that in Florida because it's still, like, city life, full, full suburbs in okay. Florida. Cali... Is traffic is disgusting. Kelly's LA. everything's more expensive. The people yeah. there are disgusting. It's Hollywood. <laughs> everything ran. Yeah. It's disgusting. Okay. The, okay. The only thing good there. It's a good place to vacation, not to live. My uncles live there. A lot of people I've known live there. My his, cousins his live sister, there. My his sister, sister lives, lives there. Actually, Does she it, like it. Oh, she loves it. Wait, what, what yeah, part no, of Kelly? Irvine. Irvine. Or she's Irvine. Irvine? Yeah, Irvine's, Irvine's, Irvine's beautiful. Irvine's beautiful. It's Northern Orange Cali. County is a lot of Muslims. A lot. My all my mom's side is in Orange County. Yeah. Um, but Florida is just like. Man, what's, yeah, but it's what's a, special it's about Florida? Yeah, yeah what's I think it's the Florida? most. It's just boring. the weather. Weather yeah. beats everything. You don't. You want sun twenty four seven all year round, really? Twenty four seven. You don't want to. California is the perfect balance. I feel. Yeah, I mean, but I, I actually Michigan is the perfect balance, but California Michigan is, is a very imperfect balance. <laughs> no, it's no sun. Mm. We have it's beautiful summers summer, and beautiful it's winters. Torture. This is the winter is a little bit too long here. It is. You're right. No, all that's flying by, bro. Last year was torture. Last year it was snowing in April. Okay, we're getting off topic. So Kelharani has an <laughs> opportunity. To, if he gets the opportunity, inshallah, that he gets to pick. If they give, if everything goes right and everything goes according to plan, he has an opportunity to transfer to California. And they were like, "Would you actually do it?" So the Dearborn people watching, let us know in the comments. Would you leave your hometown for a job? And what would be the reasons why? Go ahead, Kel. So I, I've always said, like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> because, like, you know, all my all my cousins, I like to hang out with my cousins a lot. You know, obviously all my friends are here, and it's just it's just invaluable. Right? But well, then, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly is, like, it's kind of a different story. That's how I view it, because you can still get, like, um, I feel like you can still get, like, halal food out there and stuff like that, too. For sure. Oh, so, well, you can. Sure. You know? It can't be the main reason why you're that's stopping. Yeah, there's you. a lot more reasons to it. I mean, cha- change of scenery is nice too. Yeah, guys. like I mean, uh, have you ever lived alone? I've never lived alone. It's it's different, right? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, but it's actually I lived alone for like a month, but that's not as it's, 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 it's a lot harder when you're like, well, how far is the flight to Cali? Like four and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so four and a half hours, you know, across the country, it's a lot harder to do it than if you were like, you know, somebody that went out of school to like a different city or like a different right. state nearby. Hour away. Um. Like I, I, I lived in Kalamazoo, but in the back of my head, I don't really count that as living alone because I could always just take a, a two-hour train. At least for me, personally speaking, living alone really, it, it, it gives you structure. Yeah. You learn, if there, there are things, believe it or not, you don't know about yourself yet. Right. And you won't learn them until you live alone. For sure. You're going to learn so many niches about yourself and some things you might not like, I swear to God. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I do this. I can't believe I have this kind of habit. You know, and then another, another piece of advice I, I will give people that, you know, that f- want to, you know, endeavor onto that journey alone. Do not get used to it because being alone is actually nicer than it sounds. And when you get used to the habit of being alone and being so self-reliant, you're not going to want to be amongst company again. You're right. right. That's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's pros and cons to it. Like I've recently yeah. caught myself. It's, it's actually, it's fucked up, but like being alone is, it's like for me, like having my whole life, I mean, we have a large family. I've always used to being so rowdy. Everyone's always up in each other's business. Yeah. Everybody knows everything about everybody. You substitute that for the complete opposite, a complete 180. Yeah. You well, know, of you just being by yourself in silence. Sure. But I think that being alone in silence is also very important. Like no, it's good. Having it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great, like, but I'm saying getting used to that is dangerous. Getting used to it yeah. is dangerous. Because it's so good. But That's you, why. You really, like when you get to reflect alone, when you get yeah, at, yeah. at the end of the night, you know, pull away for a bit. Uh, you know, it's... You know, 100%. It, 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 yeah. It's I mean, I feel like it can only be good for, for so long. You yeah. know, after like maybe like well, a year, you might start going. Bro, crazy. I used to, I Years. used to wait. Like I used, I used to call my friends whenever I want to go get food, and I would sometimes if there's nobody that wants to go get food, I'd end up sitting home. This is like a couple years back, and now I got to a point where I'm okay going and getting food alone. Like I did, 
like every week now, like on one of the days, I'll oh go, no. I'll get food. I, I'd go to Dave's alone, or I'd go to a certain restaurant that I that I like. I'll go sit alone. I'm just will like, you di- will you wait, get waited on? Not no. Okay, okay hold on. That's depends. a different debate. We'll open that debate yeah. in about two seconds. But, finish. And then I realized how much I enjoyed my company. I just enjoyed sitting there alone and, and just enjoying this food and. Okay, so the original topic that we started on was the gym, right? Having a gym partner for someone that is not as experienced in the gym. This is where I'm extending, like, this is where it's springing from, right? So, so me and Cal were talking, and going to the gym with a partner is nice when you get out of high school or, or in general, when, like, when you're just still a rookie into lifting or anything you want. You want someone to be with you, give you motivation, go at the same time, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the more you go, the more you want to be by your like yeah. having yeah. a partner for the gym. If you tell me you have a partner, like everything has to align perfectly. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like when I f- like me and Hawili go, if the time lines right. But like I always said this, like having a gym partner, it only lasts so long. Right. right. And like, bro, imagine you want to go to the gym. You get off early at work, and it's like four or three o'clock, and you're <laughs> but like, the I'm other person is not, is not dealing with that until like six, and you're like, I'm not gonna wait. And then you go, and then it's just so peaceful. You do your own thing. When I was in high school, or right when I got out of high school, I was like, there's no shot of me going by the gym by myself, right? Yeah. Now, there's no shot. I'll work out with someone unless it's like, unless time's it up. Works. Perfectly, yeah, right? yeah. It works, yeah, yeah. So then you take work. that narrative to the movies. Okay, I'm known to be the guy that goes to watch movies by himself. Really? I used to, yeah, a lot. <laughs> I used to go once a week. I st- <laughs> I, I've been going the last eight, nine weeks every week, but like by myself, I used to go all the time. Like during Oscar season, I'd wait, like... I've been to the movies on Sunday, like, at 10 a.m., and, like, there's times I would go by myself. Bro, it's chilling. You buy a ticket, you go, you watch it, you get up, you leave, whatever. Yeah. Okay, and then it goes to the next step, okay? Would you go to the mo- would you go to a restaurant, a restaurant or a place to eat, sit down, get waited on, eat by yourself, and then leave? You know, I do that, like, four times a week. By, no, but get no, no, waited no. Take on? Away, Absolutely, and take, I get waited take on away by myself. Lunch, yes. Take away a lunch break, though. We're not huh? talking about on a lunch break. We're talking oh, about like going like yeah. at night, like you take uh, yourself by out to yourself, your own say dinner. on a Friday night, you get up and take yourself out. I don't think I've ever done that, but I, w- I, I could see myself doing that. The older you get, the more you're like, I don't give a shit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm handling. I think the older you get, the more comfortable, like the more you start putting yourself in front of people's feelings. Well, there's a lot of. Yeah, very it's true. exactly what it is. Like, okay, like, do, do I really want to text everyone right now? Hey, would you want to go to the movies? Hey, what time? What time is this? What time? Oh, do you, are you guys hungry? Oh, you're waiting at seven. I want to eat right now. And then the more you start to realize, bro, why am I going to wait? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll get in my car. I'll go. I'll enjoy it. And then if they want yeah. me after, they want me after. It's exactly what it is. The older you get, the more like careless you get with certain things. Sometimes you look for like eating out and food, not for not so much for the food, but kind of like something your, yeah. to, something to do, something you know, talk to somebody. But if so. it's convenient, why not? Hey, let's yeah. go to the gym together, and then we'll grab something to eat after. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. But if it's like I'm hungry, hey, you want to wait two hours? It ain't happening. Exactly. Yeah, but also for yeah. some people, like, yeah, that's the only time they get to themselves. Like that's their me time, either eating alone or working out alone. Yeah. You know, especially people that are with people. Al- I'm sorry, especially people that are surrounded with people all the time. Like, yeah. and I don't think that's like healthy to be around people all the time. No, absolutely, s- I don't think it's healthy either. You, you start have to, to rely no, no, on you all need these your groups. Own, no, no, you need no. You have to have your own me time. It's like a requirement, especially when you get older. But there's a lot of people who still don't know that. There's yeah, people because who still I'm telling you, they, it, it's it's unfortunate. Yeah. Pe- people people need to spend, like I said, a healthy amount of time alone. Yeah. So for the people, listen, ninety nine percent of our viewers are in Dearborn, right? Yeah. <coughs> for the for the one percenters. So the one percenters that don't know the Dearborn culture, not not the Dearborn, the Arab culture or the Middle Eastern culture, or a lot of cultures like the Mexican culture also do this and the other uh, cultures. <coughs> you all right? That time. So what people, uh, <laughs> what, what we do is the Middle Easterns in Dearborn mainly <coughs> is you don't move out normally. Like nor- you, people have done it. My brother has done it. Both my brothers have done it. But the more um, you do not move out unless you're married. Right. Yeah. Okay. Would yeah. you guys all agree? Uh, oh yeah. So for sure. if you move out, wait, agree that that is like the, the general. general it's, a norm. it's a norm. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the general. Yeah. yeah. Like I told my coworker, yo, I got friends making six figures, twenty nine, living at home with their mom. Yeah. And they're like, why? I'm like, because they're not allowed to. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> they're not allowed to. He's like, yeah, bro, I got guys. Like I got a lot of guys making like decent money. They ain't moving out. Like their mom will look at him like. Would, would they, uh, I mean, even s- a lot of us would be like, what the hell? Why would I even move? Yeah, on? like, okay, in their mind, what are you doing? In our mind, first of all, I get the other response of, I can't move off if I wanted to. Or, 
Bro, for what? I'll save money. Yeah. There's so much aspects you can look at it from, but like, yeah. like I know. But here's the thing: when you actually step back to think about it, oh, it's it's stupid. It's not that Why? it's stupid. It's it's like, imagine, it's imagine, stupid. no, no, just hear Why? me out. Hear me out. Just imagine like a grown ass man. <laughs> saying, That's what it is. Just saying, saying. Yeah, like I like I like my mom washing my fucking underwear <laughs> and cooking my food. Okay, no, that's, that's why that's I don't want to move excessive, out. Excessive, yeah. Huh? That's how it is. That's it's realistic. That's, that's the reality. Mm. You're yeah. th- we're almost thirty, Ali. Yeah, yeah you're but, you know what I'm saying. Who's, okay, who's, thirty. Yeah, you should call. Well, maybe him. he's oh, washing. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. We're about to turn twenty eight. What is the cross line? Maybe though? Khalid's washing his own stuff, and because there is a look. No, 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 the, no, no, that's not what we're not taking shots at you, Ali. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not singling people out. I'm saying like that is the narrative. Uh, that's that's what most exactly people it. say. Why right. would I leave? You know, I get a home cooked <coughs> meal. My 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 uh, my laundry's done. Everything is done for me. That's Which literally what I hear people say. No, no, okay. that's but not right. No, okay. now now mind you, now okay, there are people out there that live with their parents, do their own laundry, do their own chores, and cook their own food. That's different. But what I'm saying is, regardless, for those people themselves, unless unless you are taking care of your parents, that you know, some people they have parents they need to be taken care of. Yeah, I, I understand that. Unless you don't have that responsibility, why? Why wait until marriage? That that I'm not I'm not saying it's wrong to stay with your parents. I'm saying why wait? Like so what, what what is the issue with? So it? that's some people get comfortable waiting until marriage to what to move? To move? Yeah, that's the main thing. Like yeah. bro, I'm telling you. What if pe- some people don't get married? You live with your parents <coughs> your whole life. Right. I know I know yeah. people that have been with their parents and they're in their mid thirties and they're not married and they're just they're waiting on that fucking day. Come on, cause like okay. something's got to give here. There's so much different points of view. Okay, so some people don't move out because they don't want to move out. There's some people that want to move out but they're waiting until marriage. There's some people that are just like. In the middle. Some people just don't have a choice. Yeah, or exactly. Some people, mm-hmm. like my brothers, both my brothers left. But one was 24 and one was 22. One had to move out like different. And then most of, uh, my brother most moved out prematurely before marriage. Like two years before marriage. He went mm-hmm. out, bought a house, and set a children's house, lived in it. And then if, two years if, later. If it's a crowded house, <coughs> it makes more sense. To, 100%. Because you, know, you start, you know, you get, you get really frustrated when well, the house, you have to like, wait for bathroom time and stuff. You look at like. Bro, because I, I work with a lot of, like, obviously, a lot of people, everyone, everyone works with different ethnicities, right? I work with white people. And they tell me instantly, oh, yeah, man, uh, my parents you're, you're lucky. Uh, I, I, moved, I got kicked out at age of 18. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, man, this, this sucks. You know what I mean? Because you look at it from our view, right? Like, thank God. It can always be worse. You can always say that, right? You look at it like, man, we get to live at home. Obviously, we pay bills and stuff, but, like, we're saving so much money from that point of view. Yeah. We're getting pampered. Not pampered, but we're getting taken care of with our mom. Let alone, we don't have... An infinite time with our parents. Yeah. So when you're living with them, like us three, he's not. But when us three right now, like right now, I can move out, right? We can all agree. I can move out. But like one of the reasons why I don't move out is because there's only a limited time I can have with my living there. So I'm going to look back at this time and be like, hey, like I remember the good times I lived with my grandmother and my brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. yeah because not, you know the days are numbered. Exactly. Their days mm-hmm. are numbered because the day I get married or even, if, let's say, whenever I get married, time before, I'm going to move out to fix it up and live in it and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But, like, the days are numbered. So, right now, we're all looking at it, or maybe I am, but I don't know about you guys. Man, I'm living at home. I can't wait to move out. It's the same theory of when you're younger. Man, I want to get older. When you get older, it's like, but why? What? You wish you were younger. Wh- Embrace the time you're with your parents because it's not, you're gonna look back at this time. You're gonna look back at your living with your mom and dad, and you're like, man, what a time. Yeah, I used. Yeah. To <coughs> That's how I look at it. It's like, bro, embrace it. Thank God that we're we can, we're capable of living with our parents right now. Because some parents are like, get out of my house. You're paying rent. Yeah. Well, look, I think a lot of people they, when they see that you're still living with your parents or something, and you're 28, 29. They automatically assume that you don't know how to yeah, bomb. certain skills. You don't know how yeah. to cook. You don't know how yep. to clean for yourself. You don't know how to organize yourself. Which is which I think is it's pretty weird, but that's the the well the that's that's the theme. You know why? Because most people, especially in our culture, live with their parents. That the reason living with their parents is that they don't have to do any of that stuff. Right. That's why that assumption is created. <coughs> but it's all it's, yeah. Go on. No, no, I was gonna let you finish. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. I'll, I so so I kind of look at it a little bit differently, right? I look at it when you're in your twenties. You 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 should be trying to grow in your twenties. You know, as grow when you're living at home with your parents, it's growing financially. Yeah, f- exactly. That's the biggest advantage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because a lot of America, a lot of these white people, right, uh, paycheck to paycheck because they get booted, you know, at 18 or once they got to college, 22. It kills okay, them, Okay, but let me, let me ask you a question. But at the same time, it, it can also be crippling. How yeah, many see, people 100%. do you know make a shit ton of money? They don't have bills to pay, no responsibility, so they just spend that money. They, put it, yeah. They, yeah. they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, they, that, it's, that's it's, true. It's, it could be a two-way street. It's going to come down true. to the person there, anyways. Yeah, there's pros and cons. Yeah. It obviously comes down to the parenting, <coughs> but then you look at it like like you got to like – because I was, uh, this is when it woke me up. And I, woke me up, it was, I thought it was funny. 
one time I was driving and I was listening to the Breakfast Club, okay. and they were like, uh, Charlemagne was like, "All right, guys, we're listening to the callers." Um, what was the oldest you heard your boyfriend still living at home with his parents uh, <laughs> before you before you left him? It, it was something about age and like, and some girls like, "Yeah, 29? man, my my boyfriend was twenty four, still living with his parents. I dumped his ass." I'll what? Send it back. <laughs> and, uh, hey, back hundreds of calls, hundreds of calls, just calling him. Yeah, man, I was with a twenty five year old still living with his parents. I'm sitting back. I'm like, bro, these guys will work. This guy killed on his way to work. <laughs> All <laughs> the hours going back to work. And uh, it shows you that difference of culture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I you ain't. Appreciate more, our culture. Exactly. Seriously. I love it. Like, obviously, like he said it, like, there are 28-year-old engineers making six figures that don't know how to do the laundry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you show them how to do it, I'm not no, 100% easy. sure. I, I know. don't get what. I know, but if I tell most of the majority of the guys in Dearborn, hey, do the laundry, look at me, like, yeah, I've never done it before. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. Which uh, is crazy. Hey, it is. Yeah. Hey, uh, do, do, uh, cook something, nothing. Do you know how to do this? Nothing, right? But then you look at it from the other side, the, pe- the people that got kicked out when they were 18. Mm-hmm. They know how to do all that. Oh, for sure. they got prepped to do that. Bro, I think it's 955. Yeah. 955, and uh, this guy, I hate Mojo in the morning. I swear to God. You still listen to Mojo in the morning? No, it was back in like five years ago. <laughs> oh, when I first like, like, the room. <laughs> hey, that guy, yeah, that look, hey, that move, that, that show is so <laughs> satanic. I hate it. Okay, but the first thing, when I used to listen to it like five years ago, when I first got a 9 to 5, like an uh, earlier job, they were talking about it. They were like, oh, man, uh, my son is literally going to turn 18. And I literally told him he has two weeks after he turns 18 before he gets kicked out of the house. Yeah, that's crazy. 18 years old, huh? I was like, you're kicking an 18-year-old out to the street? Did you know? 18-year-old is still kids, hey, bro. Yeah. If they you're are eight, right now, if you meet your 18-year-old self, imagine he was thrown out in the, in the, in the world like that. Yeah. Oh, it's my God. Interesting. I'd imagine. I'd, I'd, Very interesting. I'd, I'd be well, all right, guys. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay. And... And we're back. We're back, boys. We're back. Okay, so welcome back to the podcast with my beautiful, greatest looking girl host of all time. What up? Mustafa Wheelie, Kyle Harani, Adikas, and myself, Khalid Harani. I mean, uh, Khalid Bezi. You wish. On that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, w- you were talking off the air. What did you want to mention? We'll just, we'll just go with it. We'll just go with it. Talk, all right, yeah. so... Uh, so the off topic was uh, why d- why does why do certain people think all of Dearborn is part of the one percenters? What the fuck is a one percenter? One percenter is how much they make, basically. Like oh. I think one percenter is someone that makes over hundred thousand, hundred thousand a year. Is it a hundred thousand, right? That's the high. Well, class. I was telling them if you're five ten, you make over like sixty eight thousand a year. You're single and not obese. You're a part of one percent. <laughs> There's a one point three percent chance. Of Where did you hear this statistic? It's, it's, it a, it's a woman delusional calculator. <laughs> it's actually based off the oh, U.S. Census. Oh, yes, you're right. It's I, a yeah. woman delusional calculator. I, yes, yes, he's yeah. absolutely right. That's what it's Where, called. Yeah, so girls will go on TikTok or people will go on TikTok and they'll ask women. certain people in the street. They'll ask a woman in the street, like, okay. what do you, you know, what do you expect in a man? And the girl will say, um, you know, three hundred thousand dollars at this age or something. And, and so the person will go and type in in the delusional calculator. <laughs> <laughs> How many men, you know, or twenty? Th- the age range of twenty four to twenty seven, three hundred thousand dollars, and it'll come up point zero 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 five percent of the world have this, and it's called the woman delusional calculator because they're what delusional. kind of response do they expect? <laughs> Honest to God, what kind of response do they expect? Yeah, well, uh, I, th- I think I just find that hilarious. The woman delusional calculator. If you're marrying for money, you're going to file for. You're going to take that money and get, call Hawili and file for a divorce the next month, like the next year. <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing out here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, uh, why is people's first motive uh, money? You know what? I'm going to be very honest with you, okay? And you, you guys might not hear what I have to say. We might hear about it. We might, uh, might agree. Uh, okay. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't have an issue with somebody that wants to marry somebody for money. My issue is somebody that doesn't tell somebody they want to marry them for money. Um, no. So, I so what I, I, here's, here's, here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at, okay? There are both men and women out there, Okay that want a significant other that is very financially well off. A man that comes from a very wealthy family wants a woman that comes from a very wealthy family. This is the reality. Yeah. A woman from a very wealthy family wants to, wants a guy that's very wealthy as well. And then you just have people that just want to marry somebody that's wealthy. They want to be taken care of. Nothing wrong with it, but that's what you have to say. There are but my, my issue are, are with people, both men and women that disguise it and say, "Oh, no, I like this person because of this. I like this person. Like, no, the reality is you like this person because they bring home this much money a year. Yeah. Say that. Say that. Like, don't be fucking shy about it. Own up to it. There's, 
There's that, that's where I'm at with that. That's my issue with that. That's my issue with these kinds of people. So, as they will not. I'm sorry. Well, no, you're good. I'm just dying to say that, as, as that. Is that they will not openly admit what what they're looking for? No, no, there's some that will actually admit that. And, and it's wallah, pretty, wallah, it's how about this? Weird, respect man. Man. Like, don't, don't don't get me wrong. I don't. I I I, I respect them for it. I'm, I don't agree with it. You respect their honesty. Yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, I respect the honesty, bro. Yeah, say what sure. you At the very minimum, at least they're not hiding it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want somebody to take care of me. I don't want to work. You know what I mean? I just want to sit home. Versus guy or girl, bro. Like Either or. Same shit. Most people don't. No, but what, 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 what I'm saying is this. Here's, 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 here's what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is, in today's society, both sides work. Mo- for the most part, both sides are educated. Um, so I, I feel like... Well, 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 what we're talking about in terms of the person that just wants to sit home and doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to go to school, just wants to just be a housewife. Or What's wrong with that? There's no, no. I'm not saying. I'm saying there's those there, that that's not out there anymore. It's not that there's something wrong with it. It's just and, and, and in fact, I don't know if you guys would agree with this. Most men are looking for women that have those skills now more than an education. Where back then, people yeah. were looking for more women that have a degree. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, like when you have kids, with, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. You know, anybody that has kids, you don't want them raised by, by, by a nanny. Of by course. You, you, want, you want your wife or you or your family to raise your kids. Yeah. You know, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want to keep it in the family. You don't, you don't want somebody random to go drop off your kids at a daycare, be raised right. by a daycare. Fuck that. No, hell no. But that's me speaking for myself. I, I'm, I'm not against anybody that wants to do that, but I just don't think it's good parenting. No, so there's a bunch of, man, there's so much ways you can attack that subject. So there's the aspect of America wants double income. They want, okay, that's a conspiracy way, but you know what I'm talking about. I get you, they yeah. Want, they want the mother and father to work so you can leave your kids in the uh, supervision of the uh, the, the, the supervi- people that are running. The like preschools. The preschools and these people that are uh, slowly, daycare, yeah. slowly infesting these kids with, uh, brainwashing these kids with, um the their slip ideologies, it, yeah, their yeah. ideologies and stuff. You know where we're going with this. Yeah. Uh, and then there's <laughs> the other aspect of um, of double income is getting insanely like everyone's doing it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some people like I know I know a lot of people that their husband's working, their woman has a degree, but they still sit at home taking care of their kids. Right. It's right, all about right. their values. There's nothing wrong with it, whatever you want to do. It's how like I asked one of the kids, a guy. Uh, he told me I'm not gonna say his name. I was like, your woman. It's a nurse. She's like, she's never worked. I'm like, why is it? Because what's more important? Her making an extra dollar. I make enough. He's like, how did I make a good, decent amount of money? He's like, what's more important for him to bring it for, so I can afford uh, another patio set in my garage or do some bigger house or the kids are with their mother. Exactly. And they're in love with their mother and yeah. everything's raised. And that's the way he looks at it. And it's beautiful, right? right. And, and there's right. some people that they have the double income and then they... they there's so much ways to look yeah, at it. What do you guys think? Of course, he's willing to provide. and he, He's able yes, to provide. Absolutely. But you give your wife that choice. If she wants to work, if she doesn't want to work, it's up to her. I don't, I, I'm not the one to say, oh, hey, you're going to sit home. Like, what are your opinions on it? It's a, on what? It's just like, well, like, well, uh, so to me, well, so you got to set that up up front when you, when, you know, when you meet a girl. Like, hey, do you, are you career focused? Because that's not going to align with me. Your career focus. That's very like uh, well, a that, like that's a very good way of approaching it. Like, hey, my goals are this, this, and that. That's one of the biggest. Like, imagine talking to a girl like, yeah, yeah, you can work, you can do. Second to kick, yeah, stay your ass at home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Imagine what I, a love, I, love, I love, I love, I love how the tone changes. Yeah, you can work. Stay your yeah, ass, stay at your ass at yeah, home. You don't switch up. That you know, obviously, you're asking. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's it's still a, at the end of the day, it's a contract between you and your significant other, right? So the way I look at it is, it's 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 pretty simple. I mean. At the end of the day, you, uh, as men, we can't have our cake and we can't eat it too. It, 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 something's got to give. You know, you can't sit there and say, "I want to go with an education," but then you're gonna go make her get a degree for her to sit home. You yeah, I'm, I'm not. So, like so he, that, that's where. So, and here's another thing. At the, at the same time, it has to. Something has to. Unless you guys don't want to have kids, something's got to give. When when once you know once kids are there, the sacrifices yeah. have to be made. It is what it is. And if you know, in these conversations, like Kel said, they have to be made before you guys take that step. You know okay. that. That that I mean I call it a contract. Marriage is a contract. You know this is this. I mean this might be the attorney in me speaking out, but I mean the contract comes prior to the marriage. You guys, I mean, there are there are there are, there are, there are deal breakers for each side. Um, I guess I'm just trying to know like what do you mean when you say like um that's not gonna align with me in what sense? So like man, you know there's some days where like I don't get off work probably till like six or seven o'clock, right? 
And you don't want that the same situation with your wife where you guys are all, I'm, we're both trapped at work today. And okay, now like, okay, the kids, now you're scrambling to handle what, what's going on with the kids. So obviously, you know, it, most girls are educated these days, right? And right, I mean, right, that's, right. That is the natural next step when we get out of, co- when we get out of college or high school. It's like, we're going to school now. It's, it's just natural. You don't even think about it no more. Right. So you, you, you do have to come up with like, you know, a game something, plan, something, yeah, yeah. because they're obviously going to go to school and they're obviously going to use and a I, degree, I, and it could be a backup <clears throat> plan too. You know, yeah, there's nothing right. wrong with a backup S- plan as a degree. So, real the, quickly, sorry, go I, ahead. I think any man obviously wants their their child raised by their mother, not 100%. not by anybody else. No, the yeah. point, the point, all, the only point I was trying to make is this: if you guys can't figure this shit out, it's, 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 this is not something Find you want to figure out when you have a kid. Yeah, but <laughs> something say you your figure, child. You need to figure it out before you decide you want to have children. Because here's yeah. the thing, okay. I think, and you have to be brutally honest, man. If this is a person you want to spend the rest of your entire life with under the same roof and not have to come see me at my office for a divorce, you need to be brutally honest with each other. Like, if, for example, if you're the kind of person that, hey, work all you want, the second you get pregnant, you're sitting home, you need to say that to this person. Can I ask you something? <laughs> right before the day. Can, let me ask you something. I know you're a lawyer, and I'm not sure. You work in divorces at all? I do criminal okay. divorce, yeah. What is one of the biggest reasons you see, like, Woman and and you know in, in our community. Yeah, I'm gonna be very honest with you. Yes, it's not cheating. Okay, it has nothing to do with money. It's one simple word, and that word is patience. We our generation lacks patience for one another. The one the one thing our parents' generation had that we didn't have <laughs> for one Absolutely. another is patience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, there was a. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's I I actually heard the story one time. I was watching. I was scrolling through Instagram one time at work. And uh, there, was a, there was a guy telling a story. He was like, you know, I ran to this old couple once, a really older couple. And I asked them, you know, how are you guys able to stay with each other for so long? And then they said, well, we were able to put up with each other through the toughest times in the world. Instead of us throwing away our relationship, when, whenever there was a problem, we would sit down together and figure out how to get over that problem. Our generation's the exact opposite. And a lot of people blame independence for that. Y- yeah. You know? A lot yeah. of people blame independence for that because if you have both sides that are making great money, they're both independent. At this point, it comes down to, I mean, can you satisfy my needs? Can I satisfy your needs? If you can't, guess yeah. what? I have one little thing that's wrong with you. I, you're, at this point, you're replaceable. Yeah. This is 2023. Divorce is no longer like a cultural taboo well, in any you're culture. Right. I mean, it's kind it's, of. It's, it's become very, it's, in fact, it's become the norm. The same okay? movement of. In fact, it's yeah. become the norm. So now it's like, okay, you know, if there's something about you I don't like, even if it's a little niche, something I don't even like, I, guess what? You know what? Bye, you're gone. And this is two ways. Men and women are doing Absolutely. this to each other. Yeah, so no, so right. people come into my office and they're getting divorced. It's never, uh, you, would, you, you know, you would think it's because either, you know, one of them cheated on the other, maybe financial situations, maybe tr- uh, uh, situations regarding their children, maybe situations regarding their in-laws, uh, domestic and physical, abu- physical and emotional abuse, none of that. Uh-uh. It's more of like, yeah, I, I got we're, bored. We're not compatible. Oh, uh, no we're more. not compatible. Yeah, we just, I mean, you know, we, we kind of fell out of love. It's, it was mutual. It was mutual. So I was listening yeah. to this. Tragic. I was listening to this podcast. Uh, I forgot who said it. But, okay, so there's a couple things I want to mention. Uh, so they were talking about dating from a younger age, right? Yeah. What does dating do? Um, it gets you pre-exposed to divorces. That's yeah, it's because it's a temporary. You're, you're temporary, really, boom. Yeah. Right? And then the second thing is, is uh, Tinder. Yeah. You're going on these temporary things, swiping. Oh, she's not perfect. Swipe, 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 swipe. Whatever the hell you're using. Bim, bumble, yeah. Hinge, yeah, grinder. I was just talking about this with TikTok. Like, it's made me not enjoy shows. And it's uh, it's like a really? temporary. It, I don't know if it's just That's me. Interesting. It's it's te- it's It's programming your, as a kid to, t- like, not being instantly gra- like satisfied and swiping to the next one. Right. Or, like, the dating when you're younger. Like, that's why, like. There's so much things that are programmed when you're younger that affects you when you're older, and this generation's heavily it's, getting smacked. It's worse now. He says it's like it's actually very parallel, right? Because now you get short videos that get your attention, get your dopamine, run, and then on to the next one, right? And uh, in, in, instead of instead of watching these longer, even though they're not that good for you either, TV shows or movies, right? They're more dedication. They're more pa- you need more patience. Yeah, for it's it. not. It's, it's exactly no the same up. thing with relationships. Yes, you can have this r- little relationship, this uh, this one night stand or whatever, but instead of actually working to something like exactly, uh, you know, and something longer. And another point I wanted to mention that our culture does that heavily benefits us is, which is heavily coming into uh, factor in the future with all of us is, most of us have our parents as babysitters. Yeah. So who would you rather want your kids instead of a nanny mm-hmm. or anything? Abs- exactly. How much time has your mother or your mother-in-law bunch, or father bunch, in the clutch, bunch, right? Bunch. 
So you have these double income uh, couples that when they have a kid, they want to keep that double income, right? And they're not really. Yeah. Who would you rather? Ra- who would you want you raising your kids? You want another Middle Eastern, if anything, the right. best of all. Like you want a, a it's the same household as you, or like your mother in law, and like you got a you got a hajibit, like in general, like I'm not hajibit or not hajibit, like the, the, the I know what you're the saying. Culture, the culture, the culture there, right? Like right. you drop them off at your parents, and and the middle the 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 Dearborn Middle Eastern like um, culture is obsessed with their grandkids. Yeah, yeah. They'll take care of them. They'll do whatever they want. Unlike other cultures, like I know a kid that dated out of his race, and his mother-in-law charged him uh, like eight hundred dollars to take care of the kid for like a month. Or, like, no, two, stop. I, I swear to God. Wow. His mother-in-law is like, yeah, I'm gonna need this and this and that, and then and I'm like, bro, what does your mom think of that? Oh like man, she, she looks at him like, like I don't understand. Yeah, I have a, yeah. It's like it's like imagine imagine you charging your son. I know, I can't even believe it. Bro, I have a similar I'll, story. It's just like that, and I'm like, there's no way you pay her. Like, I swear to God. I wanted no to choice. ask you guys a question. I don't know if you guys know this. You do know that in today's day and age, friends with benefits is actually like the most popular thing for people. Hundred percent. It's actually crazy. Like people, that's like people are actually avoiding marriage. Like cool. they would rather. But you know what? The long term effects is. is I, think, yeah. I think. I no, think long term effects psychologically are, 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 are yeah. horrible. I don't think it's popular in Dearborn. Maybe outside. No, it is. No, no, no. Oh, no. You, no, you have no idea. It's As, popular t- here. Cause you, you don't you, compare it to other states. Stop. I'm not compare it to, to other states. To our community. Are you serious, okay. bro? You don't see the filth that comes through my office. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's popular. It's more than you think. We try, it's I think we try to hide it. Why is, why is it coming oh, to your no, office? No, 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 yeah. it's very popular. Yeah, why is it coming to your office, it? bro? No, you know how many people that come into my office after their divorce? I retain them for something else, for like a business, tell me, oh, you know, what have you, you been up to, blah, blah. Yeah, friends with benefits, that's all I've been doing. That's very popular. And they'll tell me, like, oh, yeah. my friends do it. Oh, this person actually introduced me to this person that's in a very similar situation. Now we're just friends with benefits. We both know what we want. <laughs> you know, none of us want to be married. You know, nobody wants to split half, you know, half of each other's income if we get a divorce. Nobody wants to take half of somebody's house, and we don't want kids. All right. So all we want, <laughs> though, we want to be tied down to each other. We don't want any kind of, uh, I guess, what, leashes on one another. We want, we want the freedoms to live our own lives, but we know that we're going to be loyal to each other sexually. I am telling you, it's more common than you Solid. think. Solid. It is more common than you think. I want Roger's opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's got to probably I'm faint right now. Turn up on his grave. Right <laughs> <laughs> he he, he probably so? just woke up right now. He no. just woke up right now. He's gonna work at four a.m. He's, he's gonna call me right now. Hey, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I heard. I heard. I heard. The thing is, though, like, okay, so this is what I always ask. I'm gonna ask all three of you guys this, right? Okay. Okay, so you all three, okay, we, you're gonna all work your asses off, right? To do, what's the main goal when you work? Inshallah, in like ten years, you're gonna provide for your family. Exactly. Like That's all my future. money, I will work an extra ten hours straight to put another like, food on the plate for my kid and my yeah, wife. Yeah, and absolutely. Like that, right. Right. That's yeah. The first thought, right? Right. When I was growing up, I can't speak for you three, but like when I was growing up, we didn't have a lot, right? Yeah. So like, but it sculpted us in a good way. Right. Right. Okay? Right. But then you work your ass off to prevent what you went through. Hundred percent. Right. I just but what you're supposed to do exactly. But when right. you do that for your kid, there's a chance that he's not going to appreciate. Right. The brokenness, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. But I get like, that. I think what era, uh, our whole era is gonna have to go through is how in t- how to install like humbleness into these kids, and show them that like, right, you better be thankful. And I want to put them to work, bro. Like, I'm gonna take my inshallah. If God blesses me with a kid, I'm gonna put his ass to work. <laughs> I swear to God, he's gonna yep. come work with me. He's gonna be doing. He's uh, he the show ev- the, the, everything everything he's gonna be done. He's like I can't imagine. Like, imagine having, uh, like, a kid that just, like, right, just, you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's just, so, I So, like, the next generation is probably going to be, it's probably going to be pretty bad, right? Just because, like, you know, now that, You like, want to spoil them, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, like, they're going to lose, lose the, like, Middle Eastern, the Arab culture that we have. Yeah, it's already, lo- it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's losing, yeah, yeah. But, but you want, you want a son, to raise your son, like, like, Charlie raises his son in their relationship. They yeah, have, yeah. You see that ever, ever yeah. on their, th- on their Instagram? It brings them, yeah. Yeah, and they're just so close, and you 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 would want you know there's gonna be like, you want you know you that's what you want to do. It's you can only do so much until society takes it, and that's why you have to ingrain into your kids. What there was a great quote. I'm probably gonna botch it, but I'm gonna free flow it. It's like if you raise your kids good, if you raise your kids good, some. I'll pull it up on the screen. Go for you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, but the, no, it's, you can spoil grand. grand oh yeah, yeah if you if you raise your kids well. You're gonna s- you can spoil your grandkids, but if you if you raise your if you spoil your kids if you spoil you're your kids to your you're grandkids. gonna have to raise your grandkids. That's what it is. Repeat it again. Uh, so if you raise your kids, you're, you if you raise your kids well. You raise your you kids can spoil well. your grandkids. 
Yeah. But if you don't raise your kids well, you're going to be raising your grandkids. Exactly. Oh, I get it. So yeah. Exactly. It's exactly what the point is. Like, inshallah, <sighs> bro. Inshallah, everyone Allah. has good, healthy kids. And inshallah, no one else does this reckless stuff. But you're seeing sad effects from this now. Yeah. It's like you, you, I meet these reckless ass kids, and then you meet their fathers and parents, and voila, they're the nicest people ever. Really? Yeah. They, they, they work their asses off. They do everything, and then you get their kid doing stupid shit. But then you, you see these donkey ass parents that are irrelevant. Like they're literally like out Absent. doing God knows what, and then yeah. they got. Yeah. It all goes back to how your kid reacts to certain things, and uh-huh. you can only do so much, right? Yeah. What do you guys think? How do you think you're going to try to raise your kids? Man, um, I, I mean, private school. Oh, private school is a must. <laughs> like, that's not even a question. I'm not putting my kid into that filthy but it's public so school. so expensive, bro. Uh, wallah, wallah, like Hogili said a hundred times, if his dad knew what was going on in today's day, <laughs> oh, he would work five more jobs to afford <laughs> these guys to get in. Listen, man, Dearborn's slowly getting affected more than these other schools. Bro, we had like two books that haven't gotten checked out in six years, and these guys rioted for three hours, but yet they don't want to go vote. <laughs> but like, but like, if these guys were like, like it's 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 horrible. <laughs> but like p- places like these, these other places, it's getting infested. It's slowly getting into Dearborn. Yeah. But um, I will work longer to, uh, to put my kids. So in. yeah, it goes back to you know growing in your twenties, doing everything you can because if you're gonna put them in private school, you're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna have to have a pretty penny saved up. Yep, I will you have know? less kids to afford <laughs> to afford to put them in public school. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you can think about it something that to way consider. Too. Absolutely, you know? 100%. Instead of having an example, yeah. If God willing, I have. I say I had rather four or five. It all depends on money. I would never put another kid in this world if I'm not financially ready. Yeah. Some people don't agree with that. People like example Haraj, like well, just let it happen. Like basically, he's like it's in God's hands, right? But like you but can look at it from both ways. You know right? how I look at it for like the fifth kid. Hmm. You know when you. <laughs> Yeah, because comes sometimes when you hit four and you're like, all right, I'm good. That's 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 a family, and then sometimes you get number five, and then when they grow up, you're gonna be like, oh, I, I, I honestly, I would thank God we have number five. Like I can't believe I can't imagine life without number five. Like, I think kids are the biggest blessing, even though I've exactly. never had a kid. But like I can imagine, like I see my nephew and niece, and I wanna yeah. wanna die. Well, uh, right? But then, then imagine having your own kid. Yeah. Well, uh, my cousin's kids, I'll I'll do anything for. Exactly, and imagine your own kids. Like uh, you I had, a ni- you have nieces and nephews, and now yeah, you have yeah, your yeah, own yeah, kids. Like crazy, I can't man. imagine. It's crazy, I can't describe it. You guys got to see it. Yeah, see it to believe it. The personalities that uh, personalities these kids have, and it's like a miniature you, bro. Yeah, that w- that's gonna came be came from your balls, bro. <laughs> 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 it's like it's coming from you and your wife, and then yeah, and your bro. balls, and your balls. <laughs> <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, God help uh, us raising kids because we don't know how to do it, obviously. But our parents care and love, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Care and love. Our parents did it. All of us have decently big families compared to what everyone's having now, and they did it on less income than what we're making. Yeah, you, see, you notice it, like, yeah, families are getting smaller. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know why? Because people are considering. You know, this is a good thing, by the way. People, people, people are considering the cost of actually being a parent and raising your children right. <laughs> Instead of just having just kids and doing it. just pumping out a bunch of units. All <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Bro, I'm everywhere. telling you, yeah, like, uh, like, it's so reckless what they did. Bro, yeah. like, it's like, but five like, boys, uh, I, like, thank God, like, I'm done, like, I'm not gonna lie, I want, I don't believe in single child. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, I mean, we're, like, we're five obviously. at my house, I have man. five boys. Yeah, yeah. He has four, uh, three boys, two, two girls. girls. Yeah, what yeah. do you have? Four, four boys, three boys? Three boys, one girl. One girl. What do you? Three so boys, one girl. You so know what I mean? So, like. Big like, families, yeah. So, I have, like, uh, uh, from my dad's side, I got, like, uh, nine aunts and uncles. <laughs> <laughs> and that means, like, 300 cousins, you know? <laughs> that's okay, crazy. crazy. I, I can never run out of cousins to hang out yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. And so, but so I feel, I feel for those people that, you know, that don't have that, right? Like, oh, I got, I got one aunt. You know, those people yeah. like that. Uh, so, <sighs> it, so families are getting smaller. Like, now the norm is probably, like, three. Uh, even that like is max. a lot. People are going boy. People, people are praying for boy girl right now. Yeah. And they're like cutting be it off at two. Yeah. Gender yeah. reveal parties. Gender reveal parties. Gender <laughs> reveal. We're going to have, like, two fat babies fucking fuck each other up. And whoever wins is, like, yeah, the gender. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty cool. You get the No, the one that's cool, like bro, that. no, man. I saw the, no, the ones that are the best. If you go on YouTube, the ones that were botched. The ones oh, that were like yeah, they're revealed good. by mistake, like something happened. They're hilarious. It's not, it's yeah, they're haram, hilarious. Bro. One of my boys, I'm not gonna say who it was, his got botched by accident. So, uh, the, the way they did it was 
um, like there were it was like a firework that was gonna get lit up in like a crate, and then somebody would open up the crate, and then like the color of whatever like the gender it's either pink or blue, the right color would fly up. Okay, the only problem was whoever set it up didn't tell anybody that if anybody tries to open the box, it's gonna just reveal automatically what happened. So imagine oh like imagine man. like a jack in the box kind of idea. Mm-hmm. So I guess it was like a kid at this banquet. <laughs> Was fucking around near this crate. They opened it. it was like, oh <laughs> my god! The whole event, huh? It blew everything, and like it was, just, it was awesome. It was so funny. Uh, <sighs> uh, do you, uh, you guys want to speak on uh, any other certain topics? I mean, I just kind of want to circle back a bit and just kind of talk about like uh, like woman nature and men's <laughs> nature. You know, what, what do you mean? Uh, hey, Kel's coming for heads today. All right, so I mean, it's a few points to make. Like All right, one let's thing, see it. like okay, like one, women are like. Women like nice things. That's their nature to, yes, to do okay. so. And they're going to go for, like, the. they're going to search for the, the best mate. You know, they're always going to look. So this is why they look for, uh, for uh, you know, people that make money. You can't blame them. It's their nature, right? They make a, people that make a lot of money. One, because they like nice things. People, to buy, they want to buy nice things. And two, they're looking for the best mate. And what I, in this society, who's got the highest status? Money. And people over six foot. <laughs> oh, the six foot. <laughs> you know, people that make money, you know? So that's that's what they do. You can't blame them for it. And then on the flip side, you know, like men, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not like that. It's not in our nature, right? If you tell, if you tell a guy, oh, ch- t- go talk to this girl. She's a, she's a CEO. She makes five hundred k. Most men, maybe some will. Most men will be like, I don't oh, need that. I'm good. Like, why? I'm not no, no, no. People think we're intimidated of girls who have higher education or, yeah, or no, who do well from. Th- it's not no, at no, all but true. But here's the thing: it's not. There's like, guys me, like that. I, yeah, right. So there are there are men I know, especially in our, especially in the Muslim culture, there are men that <laughs> cannot live with the fact that they are married to a woman yeah. that makes more money than them. There is no shot. There's like, yeah, I won't be able to live it with. It comes that. down to. Kale has a hot take about that. Yeah, do you, ahead, do you think? Do you think it's an issue if your your wife makes more money? I do. <laughs> Why do you think it's an issue? It sets up the dynamic, you know. Actually, me and Kel uh, argued about this before. I'm, uh, I we had, had a conversation, conversation about before, it. Yeah. What What are your What's your uh, opinion on it? Well, my fr- my opinion is that the main breadwinner should be the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but that's not the question. The question is why? Let's say do you, you took two careers and you put them side by side. Yeah. Naturally, you know, your significant other's career would be more would 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 make more than yours. Is that an issue for you? So well, an engineer stage, versus a doctor, know? all right? Let's, okay. let's do it that way. You're an engineer, you marry a doctor. Okay, okay, because let's say we have to get to the point where someone's going to work part-time, right, to raise the kids. And, uh, I mean, then it's going to come up to be like a, what's called like a logical question. Hey, I make more money than you, right? But, like, as a man that that does take a shot at your pride. I mean, okay, maybe just maybe it's just me. Maybe it just takes a shot at my pride. Uh, I'm gonna work half part time. That's that in our it's our in our nature to work, bro. No, no, I said yeah. no. That's not that's not what I'm saying. So I I, I think okay. So m- maybe me personally, I think you're misconstruing my question. Yeah, I'm not saying who has to go out and work. Yeah, I think you're looking at it as if if you make more money, you should be the one to work. Is that, is that how you're translating it? I, that's not what I'm saying. Like, I'm I feel saying like it's going to boil down to that. No, it shouldn't, though. So it if she ever comes back at you with that type of logic, you married the wrong woman. Right. That, yeah. That's like, it. like, in my opinion, if my wife's making more money than me, or she started, whatever, and then she makes more money than me, I think if like she makes more deal. money than you, but then you still have the alignment that, hey, like, you know. I'm still the primary own. breadwinner of the house. No, no, breadwinner is not a good word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, put it this way. Here's where I'm at with it, okay? I know many people. Who have a career path or have a career choice that, like, whatever they do for a living, it's no like they don't make anywhere near what their wife would make if she was to go to work. Yeah. Tr- like for example, yeah. I, have a fr- I, I, what, I have I have a, I have a friend who has who has an oil change. Yeah. H- his wife is an ortho surgeon. Jesus. Okay. Like you, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't do well for yeah. himself. I'm saying that her starting salary is like 250k. Yeah, that's, th- that's no, what I'm works, trying to say. It works sometimes. Yeah, for it sure. does. I'm, but what I'm saying is, you, it all depends on the mental state that you have at the house. Yeah, you know what I mean. Obviously, it's gonna be a bitch if your wife's on top of your head. For example, if you hit like, oh hey, you know, um, this month we're struggling. Maybe we shouldn't take that vacation. And if she hits you with like, oh well, maybe if I went to work, you know, we wouldn't <laughs> have this issue. You know what I'm saying? Now that I can see that being an issue, yeah. and that can go both <laughs> ways. That can be both or ways. <laughs> for example, no, no, I'll give you another example. Okay, let's say that you have a wife that works part time. Because she doesn't want to work full time, and you yeah. and they don't, there, there, there are, you know, there are no kids at home, and then she's bitching that she wants to buy something, and you tell her, well, you know what, I can't afford this, but maybe if you get off your ass and you go work full time, maybe we'll be able to get you what you want. It's two ways. They can go two ways here. <laughs> it's like imagine you guys are both working full time. She makes more money than you. She's like, go take out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ennen kuin mä olin niinku te katsoin. Ei, ei, kun kimi on water with ice pussy. Like, come here, come here. Come here. Uh, she gets uh, one of these. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, actually, the probably the fit, you know, if she makes more than you or not, it probably actually doesn't matter as, as long as we're still aligned to the same thing of like, yeah, you know, during kids in their infancy right, and stuff right, like right, that. Right, right, it's, right, a, it's common sense, bro. Imagine no. this girl pops out a baby and goes to work like three weeks after. No, it's, yeah. it's like that. But, bro, it's like and kids want to be with their mothers, too. You know, yeah, of course, like for me, the way I look at it, it's a win win, bro. Like if you don't want to work, example, you don't work or you don't want to do stay home. I'll try my I will try my best to provide as much as I can. Okay. But if you really want to work, go ahead and work. If you want to make, example, a certain amount of money, go ahead. It's plus. It's a win-win. More money is yeah. less issues, right? In a way. But, like, the way I look at it is, like, what's more fulfilling in life? Raising our yeah. crusty asses till, until we're married? You know what I mean? Raising a child that you birth and making sure everything's all right and having that mother-son attachment or going to work a job. But, some, but that, that, I have a feeling that they only work for, like, women that go into these pointless... Um, Pointless um, careers. careers. Like, if you're an engineer, how passionate are you about engineering, right? But Not if a all. woman that goes into medical care, let's say she really cares Different, about something, yeah. she's really passionate, yeah, she wants to work two, three days at the medical, th- and then she works at her kid. It's all balance. The whole, the whole goal is to have a beautiful work-life balance. Yeah. Right, yeah. If you and your wife can sit down and be like, hey, listen, and if your wife makes decent money and you guys want to live a certain life, like, you, you, you guys can both, like, it depends on what kind of lifestyle you want, right? 100%. So that's, that's a big that's thing. That's a huge thing. You got to yeah. understand that. So if you guys want the finer things, you guys are going to have to both sacrifice maybe delaying a kid, mm-hmm. working more, and providing for yourselves. But if you want to have a kid, you got to obviously talk and, and, and level it out. And if you guys both have a nice work-life balance, hey, I'm working Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You're working this, this, that. We can work Bro. it out and stuff like Bro. that. It's all bad. These conversations, I know it's so easy for us to say, like, you know, I want a girl who makes less money than me. But at the end of the day, I don't think this conversation is like, it's not that I think serious. It's, it's exactly. It's, it's too serious. And it's like half the time, hey, when you find a girl who loves you and, and you love a girl, That's all that matters. you're not going to think about it. You're not going to think about, yeah, yeah, oh my God, stuff, she yeah. makes $50,000 more than me, but I should be the breadwinner. But like here's, here, but here's, here's the thing. Why? It's not as serious as it should I, be. I agree with you. I, am, I agree with you. And with if it all comes on because you're afraid of like ego right. being hurt because she makes maybe 50000 more. If she's not even if if she's not using that money in the house, if she's using it on herself, or if she's using it, yani, it doesn't make a here's, difference. Here's, here's, where, here's where I'm at with it. No, okay. I, like I, I, I agree with what he's saying, yeah. but what I'm saying is, unfortunately, in today's day and age, people are viewing marriage as a business relationship. Yeah, it's more of like, <laughs> what are we? It's it's not more of like. You know, you fill my voids. It's more of like, how do you benefit me, and how can I benefit you? I, I it's, get it's it. It's literally a business deal, bro. In, the, in today's day and age, when people go into a marriage, I think there that, is. That's what they're looking at. I think there is business deal type marriages, but I yeah, think it's, it's like more, it's it's like it's like okay, like you know, for the couples themselves, right? Like like the deal is like okay. I have to live in this kind of a home. I need you know our combined income has to be X amount of dollars. We're gonna have X amount of kids. I. have you know what I'm yeah, saying? Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's that's what I mean by business deal marriages. No, bro. Okay. I've been to I've been to places where like the what is it? What's the phrase? I'm horrible in Eric. Like if you get a divorce, talaq. Talaq. It's like it's like cause you want like 250k. Um, akhar. Akhar, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the dowry, akhar. The dowry. Yeah, yeah, the dowry. Yeah, yeah, the dowry. Um, the dowry. They're yeah. talking like 250k, and then you gotta come up this much up front for my daughter. And and I heard other people saying, listen, a hajj exactly, and a Quran, it, and just take care of my daughter. And then you have these clowns uh, offering uh, a quarter of a million for my daughter. And I'm like, Those, what do you think is more happier in life? Right. You know, Wait, who are the guys that are offering that? No, no, no I'm not saying no names. I've not, heard. Not, no, do you think? Like, no, no, he's saying this is what the families are bidding off their daughters for. Yeah, bidding off the, and there's some people like. Can uh, I get 250000 yeah, yeah, yeah. go one. Well, like, we, heard, got, we got 300 like, here in the corner of the guy in the cowboy any, hat. Look, any, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> any man that's willing to sit and let, a guy, like, let the father or mother say, you got to give my daughter yeah, absolutely. this so much. Bro, like, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke, yeah. And then some people rush it off. It's like, oh, it's never going to happen. And then, bro, like, I literally, like, only reason why I know, like, the Quran and the Hajj trip, because my two sister-in-laws, the both, alhamdulillah, my, like, they both yeah. told my brothers, like, hey, here's a Quran, like, the Quran and a Hajj trip. We'll pay for my wife's Hajj trip and then just take care of my daughter. Yeah. And that's I have nothing time. to do with it. I have nothing to do with it. The father should be like, hey, I have nothing to do. It's between you and him. You deal with it. You agree with something. 
And it's up to you. Guys. And it all again, it all comes down to how much that girl also loves the guy. Yes, they're not. They're not going to sit there and say, "Hey, I want, I want him to give me five thousand. They're not even thinking about that. They're thinking, "Just give me a Quran. I'm happy." When when I have big ass numbers, it strictly goes to the father and mother in law. I think. Yeah, I think so too. There's no way a woman sits like, "Oh, I want one hundred fifty thousand as my dowry." I don't. Yeah, and come I've, on. And not many do, to be honest with you. There is, but there are not many. I, I don't, don't have sisters, right? You all three have sisters, okay? Yeah. Like, do you logically think your sister's like, no, I want this much money? Or do you think it's usually, the, it's someone, someone older is telling them to do this. It's like, it shouldn't be like, yeah, okay, uh, it's going to be 350K. Uh, it's no, going to be, it's going to be, the, that's crazy, bro. That's I no swear to God, I've, two goats I've, and a ranch. I have heard numbers outrageously in front of my face. Jesus. And I well, was like, what? You know what's funny? There was uh, there was a girl. I'm not going to say her name. I was getting to know her while I was early in law school. And uh, she told me that the minimum her family would ask for would be 300K. Smalla. Hey, walla. I was like, all right, bet. Look, this is. I, so, I, so, on, so is that the assumption with, like, they're not getting, like, legally married? And so that. No, in no the that's case for both. That's, a, that's just saying, okay, so for the Islamic marriage. Yeah. There's the Adam and the Makhar. For yeah. the Makhar is the dowry. That means in the chances of yeah. a divorce. You're gonna you're gonna have to pay us X amount of dollars. Now here's the bullshit with that. Here's what the assholes will say. The assholes will tell you that the only reason the number is so high is for one of two reasons. Well, for two reasons. Number one, it makes it look like you know you you know you value our daughter so much. And number two, it prevents divorce. My opinion is it makes you. Th- my opinion is it does nothing but make you think about think divorce. about divorce. Exactly. You know <laughs> Listen, bro. I have it's had like clients. Listen, bro. I've had clients that owed. 20k in Makhar, and I've had clients that have owed up to 500,000 in Makhar. At the end of the day, if they're gonna divorce your daughter, there is no monetary amount in the world that's, that's going to hold a man back from either cheating on your daughter or divorcing her. Yeah. That's a load of shit. Using that as a deterrent, especially but look, people that are gonna, you know, at the end of the day, 99.9% of people that make this deal, they don't realize that this is a contract that they are making, like with God. And yeah. then you, you know, and like under, uh, under, uh, under our religion, you owe her this money yeah. to the death. You owe her death right. or divorce. That's what it says on these marital, um, uh, on these, on these, on these, um, uh, I'm sorry, on these religious marital certificates, death or divorce in Arabic. People don't understand it. To them, it's yeah. just like, fuck it, whatever. I don't care. I, I get divorced. I'm not giving you a cent. Yeah. And that's, that's how they. Exactly. It's like, well, the person I married, I just want them to like, think I'm broke. Regardless, like you want to like, you want to factor out money r- whenever you're meeting someone. To the full extent, and just right. focus on the person you I are. Probably, yeah, and if money comes along, all right, you should because when money factors in, it's to an extent, right? If you're just like completely illiterate with finances, and you're horrible, and you're you have credit card debt, and you're just reckless, that shows you a trait that would trigger a, a woman, a man, like a tri- if as a woman and a man was complete like reckless like that. Okay, that's the only way we're like, okay, that's a red flag, right? But like. You find it so tricky, and I think a lot of kids are reckless. Kids are reckless. Yeah, These kids sure. are spending all their money on car payments, and and, and nobody and wants to work with their yeah. partner anymore. You know, they mess they up these right. kids who mm. freaking when they turned eighteen and during the pandemic, and they were getting a thousand dollars a week. Oh but my them, god! Like buying like guns, grand. Buying guns, bro. Imagine eight grand depositing when you're eighteen into your bank off COVID. Yeah, eight yeah. nine grand, bro. It's nuts. Now they're bu- bro. You have the the, the quintessential. De- I'll say broccoli. kid, but Dearborn kid broccoli is brawl. a broccoli haircut, <laughs> a fear of God hoodie, a Canada goose on top. All right. You got oh. j- a five, five to three inch gym shorts. Yeezys. You got Yeezys and they're walking around 24 seven with a chain. You with forgot a you've got the Cuban links, it's Cuban links, <laughs> something that I don't know how these guys are affording, right? Walking around, just, you know, dapping each other up, using these new words. And uh, my brother's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> my little brother and his friends, bro. Like they're all they, they, they all have the same haircuts. They all do it. Like it's just, but they're good. They're good kids, right? Like Hamdan, like my little brother and his friends are decent guys. They're good guys, but like it's they're all the same, bro. I know, and they're all reckless. And I'm like, they're all walking out with all these things. I'm like, I, I want to look at them and be like, save your money, invest it in real. But they're kids, you know how much in, how much energy could you put into kids? Yeah, they'll yeah. look at you like, oh, you're just old. Yeah, I'm, like, right. no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to build you up. Trying to help you out here. Yeah, oh, Allah. Yeah. Being called old hags out here. Oh my God, no shot in hell, man. Yeah. No, financially, it's. Uh, d- what else would you want to say about that? I mean, on that point too, like there'd be like you, you sent me like those uh, those reels of like uh, people uh, telling their car payments. I think car payments are ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, Five hundred dollars yeah. now, six hundred dollars a month. Bro, if you're reels? lucky, if you're lucky, these reels they go like, oh, what's your car payment? Thousand dollars, and they say with a uh, with a freaking smile. I got a steal. What are they driving? 
I'm, it oh, doesn't matter. Hey, like, they work at a dealership too, and it's like I thought you would get a good deal. <laughs> like you're getting ripped here, bro. bro. In my opinion, if you're not making a decent amount of money, you should never lease, bro. You yeah. drive a clunker until you, you need it, bro. Yeah. yeah, I don't know until you can financially have it. Like if you're not financially making, yeah, but why would I drop ten, fifteen thousand in cash? No, 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 this is your, this is your, you got to look at it the other way, Cal. If you're you had zero money in your bank, let's say five thousand in your bank account right now, right, and you needed a car. What's your first thing to do? Buy a shitty car. Buy a shitty car or get something from the collision and fix it up. There's always ways to buy something financially lower, and then you build from there. Okay, I literally worked so much just to afford my focus at the time. I had yeah. zero. I worked. I bought a 5000 You could buy anything from zero to 5000 right? Not zero, but like anywhere in that range, like two to 5000 You can get a decent car. that will last you. It doesn't have to be the greatest car. But it'll get you. It will last you. Yeah, it'll yeah, yeah. last you. And when you're younger, it is what it is. You get, bro. If you're younger and you had a car, like, how many shitty cars do you see on the street at Dearborn? Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. yeah. No, but like everybody leases now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. Why Where's are they spending? The yeah, they're suckers. Honestly, like cars are probably like 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 thirty percent function and like seventy percent show. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you're buying yeah. a car just for so sure. other people can see that you have this car. I am obviously against some of it you get I, for function. Only time I'll ever lease is if my wife wants one. Yeah. She can have. The, I don't want her to have any car problems. Nothing. I'll deal with the, my own problems. Yeah, right? well, but like I don't want my wife to car breaking down. I don't want my car to deal with my wife to deal with car of issues. Course. Nothing. Yeah. I will pay extra for her to be in a nice the car. Right. For me, I don't care. Like I'll. I'll literally. I, I drive right now. Ram. Like I match with everyone in Dearborn, but I bought bought it like three years ago with Cal. Two years ago, and like I'm done. It. Like it's running fine. Right. But I do not want to lease. Yeah. I j- I'm so against leasing. I have an occur- occurring payment that... Bro, you leave. You, you go travel anywhere. You see all these 2007, 2008, 2012. Oh, I had the cars. Dear bro, you I come back <laughs> to Dearborn, you see the what? Like, oh, all that. the best cars. Because... <laughs> The number, <laughs> this guy's numbers. How about this? al Rida, his numbers were so high that the nation did an investigation and th- they, think they thought he was bullshitting. On his numbers for leases. <laughs> Are you kidding? I swear to God. It's oh. hilarious. That's how much people in Dearborn lease. Yeah. yeah, bro. It's ridiculous. Listen, bro, if you got it and that's what you just want to spend your money on, go ahead. If you have it, go ahead. I'm just saying, in our circle, that's what I think of it. It's like, if you don't got it, why are you trying to show everyone that you got it? It's, exactly. it's the people that honestly, like, that don't show it the most are usually the wealthiest. Exactly. You know, like <coughs> they're... I love I love meeting someone that just looked like a normal ass guy and they just got it. Yeah, yeah. They, get, yeah. they got like they, they got just like, blend in. They don't talk it, about it. They don't say a word exactly. about it. And I know many of them, but like, and you see the people that are just flashing. Yeah, and it's it's just their it's their personality, man. It's like the biggest was that right? Like the br- the loudest one in the room is the brokest. Exactly. No, yeah, the loudest yeah. the one in the room is usually the less confident. Yeah, it's like it's mm-hmm. it's uh, it is what it is. But all right, we had a great discussion. We'll have inshallah, we'll have a lot more. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, we um, we yeah. always it took like twenty minutes to get comfortable. Yes, yeah. but like these are one of our <laughs> closest friends, uh, Khalid Harani. I've mentioned him a thousand times, and uh, Adikast, Adikast, and the he's, engineer. He's been he watches he edits everything. He does everything for us. We thank you a lot. We appreciate everything you do. This podcast wouldn't be here without Alikas and the uh, the help from uh, Khalid Harani too. He's been uh, he watches every single episode. When this guy's useless as hell. Stop, stop. No, no, he helps. He's, he's a supporter, and he he's we, one, he man. gives me honest feedback every time it's horse shit. He's like, yo, that that episode is ass. Yeah, he does. He does do that. And then when it's good, he's like, yo, I watched it like three, four times. He he's he's a good. Uh, you think you're gonna th- watch this one? I will watch this one. Yeah, what do you mean? Me and Kale, like, every Friday, we have a tradition. We get yeah. Big L's Pizza, we sit, and we, we just gave a free sponsorship. Or Eureka. Oh, shit. Eureka. Free sponsorship. <laughs> Eureka Eatery. They can have all the sponsors in the world. If they want to sponsor an episode, I will tattoo it on my chest. Eureka's, <laughs> Eureka Eatery is the greatest uh, place hands down. in Michigan. Chicken sandwich. Chicken you know sandwich. what? Hands down. Dave, that's well, pretty okay. I have a show my icon. What? what? Stations. Is the one uh, stations one. goaded. Listen, station sh- You want to go? In- yeah, they're, station they're, they're, they're Shawarma. Uh-huh. In my opinion, Never is a top three in Deer- East Dearborn. It's my number what? one. Like Thomas. obviously, there's Tahamas and like the, there's station. In my opinion, I think stations better than Tahamas. Hey, God bless those three men behind the, de- uh, the <laughs> counter at Tahamas. <laughs> they're holding it down every single day. Although <laughs> <laughs> well, they are, bro. Twenty five chicken them. burgers. I got. <laughs> yeah, these guys really. It's like, bro, like. Stop how the assembly line at four, <laughs> bro. <laughs> we're talking, bro. Do you know how many chicken burgers these guys make between twelve and two? Well, hey, hey, I'm telling you, bro. One time I walked in, it's a bunch hey, of. Hey, hey, one time I walked in, <laughs> hey, I was just like fucking fifty burgers. They're all lined up. <laughs> pack them up, pack them up, yalla 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 yalla. These guys all walking fifty chicken burgers. Let's go. 
Let's go. You know what's crazy? Like, at Station Tahamas had the same exact chicken burger. I personally think that the, the coleslaw, coleslaw on yeah. top of Stations is so much better. It's elite. Listen, I'm just a huge fan of Station Shawarma. I think it's number one in Dearborn. Not even close. I love Tahamas, too. I love there's so much great places. But I, my go-to is Station. I love the people behind the counter, too. I, they're all good. The Salas are great people. And uh, we can go a whole other episode talking about food. Yeah. But back to Alakaz, thank you very much. Well, we appreciate <laughs> I think, everything. I think I'll add that this pod, man, from what it used to be to what it's now, the, yeah. the casual setting. Yeah, yeah the, it's come a long way. It's it's so much more fun to be honest. It's it, come you know, a long it's way. Like, instead long of having way. such a, like, it, it's, it's felt C- almost CNN, uptight before. Yeah. Now it's like, just join. Whoever wants to come on next, seriously, yes. reach out to these guys. Get on it. Have a com- fun conversation. Nothing too serious. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We thank uh, Ali Kass and uh, Khalid Harani for your time. We greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you guys want to uh, buy any merch, it's on the uh, on the highlights on our story. Um, any last words? No, this is the first time we do a two camera setup, so I'm really curious on how it's gonna come out when Ali Kass is done with it. Exactly. So thank Ali Kass for this. Yeah, edit. Ali Kass, we're gonna <laughs> put you on the spot right now. Bro. So. Uh, we'll please, guys, for all the women and men that are watching this episode, <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And when I mean comment, any topic that we talked about in this episode right now, whatever you feel you want to, which is which is all these guys, we're having a normal conversation. Oh, we're gonna get wrecked. Well, which, it doesn't matter. We're I, having I a think I'm gonna get wrecked. We respect. We're doesn't matter. No oh, man. We respect each other's opinions. Obviously, we don't agree with everything. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Whoever Wildfire wants, your heart's gonna become. It's important to come. challenge each other. Not exactly. always agree, agree with everything. Exactly. Challenge. And every time you speak, you're t- you're taking a chance of off- offending someone. But, um, yeah, so inshallah you guys enjoyed it. Any topic that we've talked about that you want us to bring back up or you guys uh, have your own opinion on it, go ahead and comment on it below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. To the minority power of Mustafa Huili, Khalid Bazi. Stay classy, people. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.